It's unboxing day. I just got the new Alesis Nitro Max electronic drum kit. It's brand new, Alesis just launched it. We're gonna unbox the kit, set it up, demo the sounds, and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end of the video. So Alesis did send me the kit, but as always, I will give my most objective opinion. So from what I've seen, they've added Bluetooth to the module, which is huge. The Nitro module also looks a little bit different, so we'll take a look at that. And the sounds in the module are supposed to be from BFD. So there should be a noticeable increase in the quality of the drum sounds we get out of the module. Now it's been a minute since we've talked about the Nitro mesh. That video has done extremely well for the channel. I appreciate everyone who's watched it. Starting off, we've got a snare drum, 10 inches. I think that's bigger than the last one. Wow, these, this shell design is way different. I like it. So we don't have any sort of logo on the mesh head part, but as you can see, there's, there's some color to these shells. They look great. It's like they're trying to kind of bring the nitro up to par with the strike. I think that's an awesome touch. So 10 inch snare pad. Oh, why is an eight inch Tom in such a big box? Let's find out, maybe there's multiple. Oh, we got three toms in here, baby. Sweet, these are cool looking. They do not have a rim, so that is interesting, but they are single zone, so it doesn't totally matter. Wait, let me show you these. You can see it's got a similar design. Again, no rim. And they are tunable. Very cool, you can kind of see it's hollowed out on the inside. I love the design, very cool. And you get three of these toms, and they look to be all the same. One's not bigger than the other, they're all eight inch. Next up, let's take a look at the cymbal pads. These are 10 inches. I don't think the design has changed on these at all. They look very familiar. So this is a 10 inch cymbal with choke. So here we've got a 10 inch cymbal that's single zone. So this, this cymbal does not have a choke feature on it. And we've got another 10 inch cymbal, single zone. So the only difference, aside from the fact that you can't choke this cymbal, there's nothing different. They, they look the same cosmetically. Very cool. One of the best parts about the Nitro mesh in general is just how affordable it is and how easy it is to get into playing the drums. And with this new kit, Elise has partnered up with Drumio, so you get a couple months subscription to Drumio's service, which is by far the best online lesson platform around when it comes to learning drums. Let's take a look at the new module. It's really cool, the design is way different than it used to be. And it even has this little phone holder or tablet holder, probably put your iPad up here, follow along with your Drumio lessons. Love that design. I noticed Simmons did that on their Titan series, and it's good to see other companies are following suit. We've got our plus and minus to choose kits. There's a bunch of different options on here, utility save and the Bluetooth feature, which is a huge addition to this module. And on the back, we've got some IO, an aux in. You wanna plug in a device and play along with it, you can. USB power, pretty standard. This module does feature the pin connectors too so you don't have to plug in 90 different patch cables. Definitely a plus. Next up, we've got the kick pedal. With most budget electronic drum kits, there's a couple things I would suggest always upgrading. One of them is the kick pedal. If you wanna develop good kick drum technique, I think it's important to use a pedal that feels good, feels natural, and typically a lot of these cheaper pedals are not the greatest. Yeah, right, here's a look at the kick pedal. And once we have a drum key, we'll be able to take our beater, put it in there. We'll be able to attach it properly, but until we get to the key. It's the biggest downside with electronic drums is the amount of boxes it takes to ship these. Oh, I'm excited for this one. So this is the kick pad. It doesn't look like there's too much change from the Nitro mesh. 
The one thing being a lot of drummers wanted this kick pad to be a little bit bigger to accommodate double bass pedals. We'll definitely take a look and see if we can use double bass on this. Just a couple more boxes and we can start setting up. So this is the hi-hat pedal. Looks like it has not changed, same as the other one, but there was nothing really wrong with it anyway. This is a solid pedal. Downside of a pedal like this is it's not completely realistic feeling compared to an acoustic drum kit setup where you have a stand that holds your hi-hats and then the pedal down here. These oftentimes feel like, like you're not really doing anything. There's not enough like tactile feedback. It's common on these more affordable electronic drum sets and it's less that you have to worry about as far as space goes, which is nice. But keep that in mind if you ever transition to an acoustic drum set that the feel of the hi-hat is gonna probably be pretty different. Accessories, we have sticks. Here's the free Drumio, yes. Drumio is the best place to learn drums online, like bar none. There's so much content, it's just actually unbelievable. So with the Nitro Max, you get unlimited drum lessons for 90 days, no credit card required. Pretty cool, definitely check this out. These hold our toms, power adapter, cable snake, stand that holds the hi-hat. All right, the last box. In my previous video, I talked about how the Nitro Mesh's rack sat pretty low. So if you're a taller player, you're kind of gonna feel like you're playing down into the drums. And somebody in the comments suggested something that you could easily just use books or you know something to raise the kit up off the ground a little bit. Hardware looks good. Maybe aluminum. It's very lightweight. Symbol stand. Yeah guys, this kit is brand new. The press release just went out for it. We're getting kind of an exclusive look at this. I think there's more stuff in here. Oh, there is. So far, I'm loving what I'm seeing. There's not too much change to the rack. The drums have a awesome finish. I love the red color. The snare drum is massive. And the new design, again, fantastic. The new module, this Bluetooth is gonna be a big big deal for a lot of new players, especially when they use apps like Moises or even just Spotify to play along to your favorite songs. The fact that BFD is also on board is huge for the sounds in the module, so I'm excited to check that out. And that Drumio is included with the kit for 90 days. I love that because new drummers, this is the most ideal first drum set you can ever have. So to all the parents out there, gets my approval. Now you could go with the turbo mesh, but I think that that kit is just too entry level and your kid probably will grow out of it fairly quickly. Well, I'm gonna clean up and start setting up the kit. If you're having trouble setting up your electronic drum set, be sure to just follow the guide here. I've made the mistake of just winging it in the past and completely messing up the rack. Start by finding the leg with the three attachments on it here. And we're gonna bring this one all the way to the top. Then find the one that has two attachments and bring the top piece all the way to the top. Keep them kind of in line with the other one. You can always adjust it later, but it'll make it easier. I wouldn't recommend over tightening on this either. And you're looking for a center bar that has three attachments on it. From here, we're gonna insert the tube into this piece, but you will need to loosen this up a tad bit. Just gonna finger tighten that for now. There we go. So this is the front of the kit. At this point, I'm gonna take the wrench here and just snug this up. Now do the same on the other side. Oh, that wasn't a good sound. I may have over tightened. I just didn't follow my own advice. Now we gotta find C, this piece. And these are actually identical. So find these outer ones and we're gonna need one of them. Then we have to find a bar that has two attachments on it. And we're gonna follow the same exact procedure. We're gonna take this piece and this second attachment here. We're gonna raise it up. Just match it and there we go. Get it kind of level and you can always adjust later and tighten them down. 
There we go, it's coming together. We're gonna repeat the same process on the other side now. So again, you'll need the piece that has two attachments. This is the one that's gonna go this way, and then you need the big leg. And then raise this up. Again, these heights do not have to be perfect. We're just getting them set. You can make adjustments later. So the next step, we're gonna add our snare arm. So for this, come down to this one here and raise her up. Next, let's add our tom mounts. That's this bag here. And the way that these work is once you loosen up that wing nut there, you can then pull these down to about there. Now these are gonna go in the center and on the right. There we go, tighten these up. Everything outside of the rack itself is plastic. It would be a little bit better if these wing nuts and these clamps were made from metal. That would be the one thing that would take it to the next level as far as durability, because I could already tell when I was screwing some of these things together, hearing cracking noises. If you're not careful, it's definitely possible you could break the plastic, so be aware. On this side, find the right clamp, and let's do the same thing. Spin it around, and let's add our mount. Finally, add this clamp to the snare post. You do have to use some force to get those in there. How you ultimately position this snare bar is kind of up to you, but if we take the snare pad and put it on here, you can kind of get an idea of where it's gonna sit. So I can already tell that this needs to come forward probably a little bit. And we're gonna move it over to the right. This is why you keep it a little bit loose so you can make these adjustments while you're setting up. Now we can go ahead and add all the toms. Do the same thing, unspin those. Put them on here, tighten them up, and make some slight adjustments. I wish these hex nuts were wing nuts. You could do this without the Allen wrench. And once you get it set up though, you're fine. If you're finding that the kit seems like too close together, one thing I recommend doing is just take your leg here and just position it outward a little bit more. Now you have to be careful though, because if you go too far, it's gonna start to want to collapse in on itself. But you can go a little bit. I think I'm gonna want that snare drum to be higher because it's already feeling pretty low. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. I think the hardest part of this process is just getting everything to the proper height that you want it. Because in order to raise up a bar like I just did, you have to undo two different screws. Now you don't have to be exact either because there is a way that you can raise the drums up a little bit more without doing that, which is just by unscrewing this here, you can pull this piece up, you know, a solid inch or two. So that would give you additional height if you need without having to mess with the rack itself. So for all the cymbal stands, they're all the same piece, so you can use any of them. We're gonna do this clamp, move it a little bit, and move this clamp down as well. And we're gonna set up our hi-hat first. There really is no right or wrong with how you set up a drum set as far as you know angles and stuff, as long as it's not completely out of whack. They recommend you put the hi-hat stand on kind of an angle like this and then twist it up. It seems to work pretty well. Let's grab the other stands. Here is for our crash symbol. I'm gonna move that all the way to the left. And the other symbol, the ride, is gonna live over here. Next, let's add our symbols. Now these have a specific way that they go on. If you look in here, there's a little recess and if you unscrew this a little bit, you can spin the stand. So what you want to do is have the Alesis logo facing you and it'll fit into that fin perfectly like so. And that'll prevent it from, from spinning because only half of this symbol is playable. You cannot hit on this plastic part, only the rubber. So I'll do the same thing for the other two symbols. 
Again, don't tighten down too hard on these. Next, the module goes right in here. Make sure you have enough clearance between that and the hi-hat. Kick tower goes right in here, boom. Pedal, got it. All right, now this is where I was saying you need your key. On your foot pedal, there's a spot here. This little square screw here, this is what you need a drum key for. So we're gonna go on there, loosen this up. Don't take it all the way out. And then grab our beater here, put that in. And you may have to make adjustments to how tall this is. About there looks pretty good. And tighten down, keep the felt towards the drum. And the kick pedal is going to attach securely to the kick tower. There we go. Final steps, we just have to connect the cables and we should be good to go. Okay, so this piece here, this piece feeds into the drum module, but you do need these little screws that go with it. And they go right in there on both sides. So it's pretty simple to follow. Just look at the labels on each of these cables and it'll tell you where to plug them in. So first we're gonna start with the hi-hat. Next we have snare drum. Here's the ride. Here's the kick. Here's tom one. Tom three. Hi-hat control pedal. Crash one. Tom two. And finally, we just need the power. All right guys, so I've got the Nitro Max all set up. Now if you're gonna use headphones with this kit, it's on the left side, there's an eighth inch jack there. One thing to note, you do not have a drum throne, you're gonna to have to buy one because this kit does not come with a drum throne, at least not in the box that I got. So I'm gonna demo some of the sounds, see what we got. The foot pedal splash is nice. Yeah, it's a little compact together, have to say.
At first glance, the Alesis Nitro Max looks to be an impressive kit. Included is the Nitro Max module, four tunable drum pads, kick tower, three cymbal pads, hi-hat controller pedal, and then the kick pedal. The Nitro Max is also one of the most affordable electronic drum kits available. It doesn't have all the advanced features of the top of the line e-kit, but you don't have to shell out thousands of dollars. Let's talk about the main features. It's an eight piece electronic drum set, although really just a five piece with three cymbals. And the kit has premium mesh drum heads. We've got an improved 10 inch dual zone snare drum pad, eight inch tom pads, 10 inch cymbal pads, five inch kick tower pad, realistic drum and percussion sounds from BFD, Bluetooth, USB MIDI, and some other practical practice tools. Alesis also partnered with Drumeo to offer a free 90 day subscription to their online lessons as a bonus with the purchase of the Nitro Max, along with 30 days free to Melodics. Me personally, I think Drumeo is one of the greatest options when it comes to learning drums online. Regarding the box size, it fit easily in the back of my Honda Civic. You don't have to be afraid if you're picking it up from the music store. The all black design with the red sparkle finish looks fantastic and the build quality is pretty darn good. Here are some pros. Alesis includes mesh drum heads and the all white heads look much better than the all black design we saw on the previous generation. It's affordable and perfect for a beginner drummer and the drum module has internal sounds from BFD along with a download of the free BFD player, which I just released a video, which you can watch right here. Let's talk about cons. There's no drum throne included with the kit, so you'll need to pick one up. The rack is a little wobbly, and the snare drum tends to sag a little bit as you start to play. The most prominent upgrade from the Nitro Mesh to the Max is the new 10 inch dual zone snare drum pad. The snare drum's the only dual zone pad on the Nitro Max, which lets you play a different sound from the mesh drum head and the outer rim. So if we hit in the center, we're gonna get a snare sound. We hit on the rim, we're going to get a rim shock. There are three sensors in the center of the snare pad, making the middle more sensitive. As you play the drum, it gets less sensitive as you move away from the center and toward the edge. Now to play the rim shots, you actually have to switch your technique up a little bit from how you'd normally play rim shots on an acoustic snare drum. Instead of hitting both the rim and the drum head simultaneously, you only can hit the rim for the rim shot to trigger if that makes sense. So if I were to go and play a rim shot, I would normally. Doesn't always trigger and that's because it's selecting one or the other. It's either picking the snare trigger or it's picking the rim shot trigger. So you need to make sure you actually hit the rim only. The kit includes three 10 inch rubber cymbal pads, ride cymbal pad, hi-hat pad, and a chokeable crash. The trigger zones face me and can only be hit from the front of the cymbal. So we can only, we can play here. Playing on that side is not going to trigger properly. So you'll hear, you'll, sometimes you'll get noise. The ride cymbal is a single zone pad that allows for two distinct sounds depending on how hard you hit the cymbal. I found myself having to really lay into the cymbal to get the ride bell sound to trigger. I may have to do some sensitivity adjustments within the module to get that to trigger, maybe a little bit earlier on the velocity scale. Now the crash cymbal is a single zone pad that has a choke feature. When we hit acoustic cymbals, we can choke them by grabbing the cymbal to stop the sound, creating a unique effect while playing for certain sections of music that need to stop abruptly. The choke feature on this cymbal works, but I have to grab the crash cymbal firmly right at the edge for it to work. Also, the decay is very, very abrupt. Might be good to have a little bit of an envelope that would allow the release to decay a little bit slower. And keep in mind, if you grab the cymbal a little bit further up, it will not choke, so you need to grab it behind these dots here. The hi-hat pad is a single zone pad that works with the included hi-hat controller pedal. The hi-hat functions great and even allows for foot splashes. 
There's no latency or delay between the hi-hat controller and the pad. The toms on the Nitro Max are 8-inch single-zone tom pads. They feature a slimmer design with a rim flush to the drum head. The heads feel identical to the previous generation's all-black mesh heads, but look a lot nicer to me. Mesh heads kind of remind me of the material that trampolines are made of, that kind of woven nylon plastic. They feel better to play on than the all rubber designs we've seen in the past. And mesh heads do place a false sense of realism on your playing. So when you switch back to an acoustic kit, you may have a more challenging time playing than usual as the sticks tend to rebound a lot a lot easier with mesh heads. I tend to like to tune mesh heads down a bit from how they come shipped, but feel free to play with it. The sensors on the tom pads are different from the snares, positioned closer to the front edge of the tom nearest you. As you can see, when I move away from the edge, we get a lot quieter of a hit. Right when I'm playing on the edge, you can hear that we're getting a pretty loud hit despite me playing at the same exact height and volume. And as I move, and we move to the far edge. So you can still get some good triggering off of the entire head itself, but just be aware that the closer you are, these sensors, they're right there. Let me try to play as quiet as possible. Right on the sensor. If I do that same thing in the center, get real quiet. It's pretty awesome. I actually don't mind that. I don't mind the, sen the sensor not being in the center. But as we're taught, make sure you're always playing in the center of the drum. Despite what I said earlier about electronic drum kits being quiet, they still may be loud. And this kit in particular is very loud, especially this kick pad. Now, at least in this room, there's not a lot in here. This is a small room, no treatment on the walls. The kick drum pad is loud. E-drums may be significantly quieter than real drums, but they can still pose a problem. Like I said, the kick tower in particular can be quite loud, especially if you're above someone in an apartment complex. The kick tower features a five inch rubber pad, adjustable stirs to keep it from sliding forward, and a Velcro strap for additional grip. The included Alesis kick drum pedal is okay at best. While playing, it performs better than most budget pedals included with other entry level electronic acoustic drum sets. I still suggest upgrading your kick pedal as soon as you can. One of my favorites is the Yamaha FP7210A single bass drum pedal. I also tested my DW9000 double kick pedal to see how two beaters would perform on the five inch kick pad. While I had good results with consistent kick triggering, I can't say that the best metal drummers out there will have the same experience. My double kick playing is not up to par, but from what I can tell, the Alesis Nitro Max kick tower will support most double bass drum pedals. The aluminum drum rack of the Nitro Max is probably the weakest point. The lightweight aspect of the aluminum is excellent for moving and storage, but this thing really wobbles and I've got it set up in a way where I don't want this to be too close together because it does dirty it up a little bit. I need this to be out just a little bit for my play area, right? Because if I start doing this, now I'm, I have nowhere to go. But when I'm playing, I don't really notice the wobble too much. The rack clamps are plastic and almost feel as if they'll break if you tighten down on them too hard. Metal clamps would be a welcome improvement to this kit design. The biggest issue with the rack is the horizontal snare bar. The snare drum tends to sag as you play, so you really have to tighten down on these wing nuts. The Nitro Max takes up little room compared to other electronic drum sets available. You'll need about a 4x4 foot space to set the kit up, which also includes the room for your drum throne. Folding the kit up for storage is as simple as unplugging all the cables, unscrewing some wing nuts, 
folding the arms in, and moving to the closet. The Nitro Max doesn't take up much space at all. You can't beat what the kit offers for $400. In my experience, the Nitro Max is a tad bit small for me. I feel kind of claustrophobic while playing. All the drums sit very close together, and it feels like I'm playing on like a mini drum set. I don't see this being as big of an issue for young players and beginners, but this is just my personal take. The height of the drum set alone can also be a big problem, and how high you sit on your throne can also have an impact. So for anybody who thinks that this kit, or if you have the original Nitro, is too low for you, and you're somebody who's taller, I've seen a few comments in the on the last video suggesting furniture risers, which I think would be an excellent option. You can also try books, anything you got around the house. The Nitro Max drum module has some fantastic new features compared to the previous generation. A device holder for your iPhone, iPad, Android, device. It's built right into the module, which is great for following along with YouTube videos or the included 90 days of Drumeo lessons. The module includes a cable snake input, additional tom and crash outputs for the upcoming expansion pack, USB connection, this only sends MIDI data, not audio, 8th inch headphone jack, 8th inch aux in, left right main out, power input, and Bluetooth. The most significant upgrade to the module is the Bluetooth connection for jamming to your favorite songs on Spotify or any streaming service. This was a required update. We needed this for the Nitro. The presets included from BFD are some of the best I've heard on an Alesis drum module. The original Nitro sounds are still included on the module. And like I said before, they sound pretty poor to my ears. I'm always a stickler when it comes to drum samples included with e-kits, so Keep that in mind. Most beginner drummers will have a blast playing on the Nitro Max. The kit also includes the free BFD player, which you can use alongside a Windows or Mac computer with a USB cable and headphones. The BFD player has a five gigabyte premium sound pack with optional drum expansions for purchase. Two are out now for 29 each. Be prepared to spend a little bit of time setting up your kit. Just the unboxing alone takes a little while. Following the instructions can be a little bit confusing. You should be able to get the kit set up in a half hour to an hour if you're a seasoned drummer and if you're a parent of someone, set up time maybe a little bit more. So that's gonna do it. Let me know your thoughts and questions down below in the comments section and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you all in the next video.